Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to evaluate a very interesting number. It is cosine i. What is i? i is imaginary. It is defined as one of the square roots of negative one as a complex number or the number whose square equals negative one. So it's imaginary. It doesn't exist in real world, but it's very helpful. Great. So how do we find this result? And let's talk briefly about it before we start evaluating. So first of all, my question is, is cosine i a real number or a complex number? Yes, we know that i is complex, but how about cosine of i? It should be complex, right? Well, at this point, go ahead and make a guess, and then we'll check your work. Great, so now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to write i as a complex number in polar form, right? How do we do that? Thanks to Euler. What did Euler say? Euler said e to the power ix equals cosine x plus i sine x. That's what Euler said, but you know what? This is huge. I mean, this is incredibly huge. So don't take it lightly. If you set x equals i, you're going to get the following. e to the power i squared equals cosine i plus i sine i. A very i expression on the right-hand side, right? i fall. Okay, what is i squared? It's negative 1, so we can write this as e to the power of negative 1 equals cosine i plus i sine i. I'm trying to find cosine i. Can I find it from here? Well, I do need another equation, right? Anyways, so how can we find cosine i from here? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use this equation and we're going to eliminate something, all right? Now, you can also look at the problem this way. I can write the i in polar form, e to the power i times pi over 2. And then if I just cosine it, I'm going to get cosine of i equals cosine of e to the power i times pi over 2. Um, now, this is not a log, so I can't really bring the power down, so it's not going to help me. But I could possibly ln both sides, but again, that wouldn't give me cosine of i. So we need to do something else. Let's go back here and use this formula. Okay, great. So now I have the following. e to the i x equals cosine x plus i times sine x. And I'm trying to solve for cosine x, right? So wouldn't that be nice if we had another equation that had cosine x in it so that it also has i sine x in it and I could eliminate possibly something that I don't need and it can be done. Notice that this is a general expression. X can be replaced with pretty much anything. Obviously, you don't want to replace X with I or maybe you do. Who knows, right? You could so possibly do the following. You could replace X with I and then with negative I and then solve for something. But I'm going to do it in general form. I want to show you a general case. We've also done a similar problem, but not similar. Actually, we did the same problem, but in that problem, uh, it was kind of reversed, okay? Things were uh, flipped around. You'll see. I'll share the problem with you. But anyways, in this case, if we go ahead and replace the x with negative x, we get e to the power negative ix, and then this gives us cosine of negative x, which is cosine x, plus i sine negative x, but sine of negative x is going to be negative of sine x, because sine is an odd function, therefore we have to have a minus sign. This is exactly what we needed, because we wanted to eliminate i sine x. Make sense? I hope it does. Let's go ahead and add these equations up. When we do, i sine x cancels out. And then we get the following e to the power i x plus e to the power negative i x equals cosine x plus cosine x, which is 2 cosine x. And since I'm trying to solve for cosine x, I get e to the power i x plus e to the power negative i x divided by 2. So that's pretty interesting, don't you think? We have two very complex exponentials. We add them, divide by 2, like we average them out, and we get a real valued expression. Well, if x is real, of course, right? What if x is complex? 
Let's find out. So since we're looking for cosine of i, it only makes sense if you replace x with i, right? I mean, that's what you got to do. So we get the following if we do that. Cosine of i equals e to the power i times i, which is i squared, plus e to the power negative i times i, which is negative i squared, divided by 2. Now, e, e to the power i squared. i squared is equal to negative 1, so this is going to be e to the power negative 1. e to the power negative i squared is going to be e to the power 1, which is e divided by 2. So that should be the answer, right? But come on, we can simplify this a little bit. And we're also going to look at something else. i to the power negative 1 can be written as 1 over e. And then this is cosine of i again. And now cosine of i, if you go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by e, by the way, it's kind of like making a common denominator, but it's actually better than that. So put an e here and put an e here. Then when you distribute, you're going to get e times 1 over e, which is 1, plus e times e, which is e squared. So you're going to get e squared plus 1 divided by 2e. 2e or not 2e. That is the problem. Okay. Anyways, that didn't work well. I hope uh, this made sense though. So that's the value of cosine i. And as you can see, it's a very, very, very real number. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and take a look at sine i real quick. And then I want to show you something else. Okay, ready? So question is, can you also find sine i? And this will be the bonus part. Normally we're done with the problem. But can you also find sine i? And the answer is yes, because notice that here we added the equations, right? Euler's formula. By adding, we were able to eliminate sine x. What happens if we subtract? Great, let's give it a try. Minus, minus, and plus. Go ahead and add these. Cosine x is going to cancel out. We're going to end up with e to the ix minus e to the power negative ix equals 2i sine x. If you go ahead and divide both sides by 2i, what do you get? Sine x. And if you do replace, if you do replace x with i, you're going to get sine of i, sine i. Okay, sine of i is going to be e to the power i squared minus e to the power negative i squared over 2i. e to the power i squared is e to the power negative 1. This is e and 2i. And then we can obviously multiply by negative i to get rid of the i at the bottom. That gives us 1 over e minus e multiply by negative i divided by 2, negative 2i squared, which is 2. And if you simplify this a little bit, we're going to get 1 minus e squared i, and there's going to be a negative sign, so it's going to make it e squared minus 1 times i over 2. And that is going to be the sine i. Now, here's one thing that I'd like you to check. Do you think sine squared i plus cosine squared i is going to be 1? Is this true for complex values too? But notice that sine i and cosine i, well, I shouldn't say for sine i. Cosine i is real. Sine i is not real. It's fake. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.